Section 3.1, the chain rule. All right, this right here is the chain rule. All right, a chain rule comes from a composite function. A composite function is when you have a function, g of x, inside of another function, f of x. So you have a function inside of a function, and its derivative looks like this. So what the derivative does is you take the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside function, just let it sit there, and then you take the derivative of the inside function and multiply by it in the end. So let's show you what that kind of looks like. For this particular problem, we're taking the derivative of this. Do you notice how there's an outside function of a cube, and on the inside function is x to the fourth minus 3x? So let me visually show you what that means. The outside function is f of x, the f, which is something cubed. That's your outside function. The inside function is g of x g of x is the x to the fourth minus 3x for this particular problem. So again, f is the outside, g is the inside. f is the outside, g is the inside. All right, so what this formula says is take the derivative of the outside and leave the inside, then take the derivative of the inside. So we're going to take the derivative of this red piece. Now you're like blank, what's blank? Well, blank is like an x, a y, a letter. Just kind of leave it blank. So what that means is the derivative of it's going to be 3 blank squared. So that right there is the derivative of the red. But then we say leave g inside. So we're going to leave g inside, so g is right here. So we're going to just leave that g inside, which is x to the fourth minus 3x. According to the formula, take the derivative outside, leave the inside. Now we're taking the derivative of the inside. So we're going to take the derivative of this inside, this g. So we simply take the derivative and multiply it at the end. So what is the derivative of g? Well, the derivative of g is just going to be 4x to the third minus 3. And we are done. This is the derivative using the chain rule. The outside is this, the inside is this. All right, if we want to take the derivative of this, you should notice a chain rule. The outside is secant, the inside is 5x minus 2. So again, the outside is secant something, the inside is 5x minus 2. So to use the chain rule, you take the derivative of the outside. So the derivative of the outside would be secant blank tangent blank. That's the derivative of secant. We leave the inside, which is 5x minus 2. And then you take the derivative of the inside, which the derivative of 5x minus 2 is just 5. And we are done. That is the derivative. Now you could write the 5 up front, which is very common to put the 5 up front. But I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to leave it. But that is an answer. Next, this one's a little bit trickier. So let me first rewrite it. I want to rewrite something that gets people a lot. They don't see this, but when you do this one, this is a 5 cotangent 7x to the 4th all to the 3rd. All right? Hopefully you can see that. Now, can you see the outside piece is here in green? Can you now see that's your outside piece? Inside of that is a cotangent. But inside of that is a 7x to the 4th. Do you see how there's three things inside of each other? Kind of like a one inside and another inside another. You would call this an f of g of h of x. You have a whole bunch of stuff inside of each other. These are more complicated because the f is the green, the h is the cotangent in blue, sorry, the g is the cotangent in blue, and the h is the red. So it gets more tricky when you have multiple things embedded in each other. But when you get practice with these, they get really easy after a while. But you kind of get used to them. So the way we start this is we take the derivative of the green, the outside. So let me take the derivative of the green, and that would be 15 blank to the second. That's the derivative of the green piece. All right. That leaves us with cotangent, all right, and we still have the 7x to the fourth. So we still have that. Now, according to the formula, then we still have to take the derivative of the inside. But the derivative of the inside is yet another chain rule. So as you take the derivative of the inside, it becomes a problem like this up here. It's another chain rule effect. Okay? So what we have to do here is we have to take the derivative of cotangent. So let's see what happens here. What we're going to get here is the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared blank. Okay? The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. That's the outside, but don't we have to leave the inside? So we leave 
the 7x to the 4th. But don't we still now have to take the derivative of the inside? So the derivative of the inside is going to be a 28x to the 3rd. So you can hopefully see the multiple embedded pieces. You took the derivative of the green, left the inside, took the derivative of the inside, which is the yellow, but leave the inside, and the derivative of the inside. Now we have to clean it up. All right, so you want to clean this up, and you would have a negative. There's a negative there, so it's negative. And then you have 28 times 15, so we have to do that one. That would be uh, that, and that would be boom, boom. So that would be 420, so negative 420. And then if we look carefully, we have a cotangent. Oh, oh, oh. let's take that back. Don't forget the x cubed. Don't forget the x cubed right there. Then we have a cotangent squared, 7x to the fourth. And we also have a cosecant squared, 7x to the fourth. And I believe that would be your final derivative simplified out.